Now floats and clears can seem a little bit more complicated when we start stacking up multiple elements with multiple float and clear settings. So I've got another file where we can try this out. And in this file, we're not going to use images and text. We're just going to use div blocks. So let me go ahead and close up this one for now. And we'll open up the tryout float blocks file. I'll pull it up in the browser first, and we can see we've got multiple blocks set up over here on the side. And let's open that up inside of our text application so we can take a look at the code. If I scroll down to the actual body tag in this document, you can see that we just have four divs created. They're all empty. And if we look up at the styles at the top, we've got width and height settings on each one and just a background color. So that's making our blocks. Now, as you can see, the gray one is just a very thin one with only a 20 pixel height. The red one's a little bit bigger with 50, green 100, and blue 150. And I've stacked them up that way so that we can see how the position gets affected by the float and clear settings. Right now, we just see each block stacked right up on top of one another. And divs are nice to use in this case since they have zero margins and padding by default. So they're butted right up against the edge. Now we can start by taking this red block here and pushing it right. Of course, I do that with a float right property setting. So we'll go into the red style. I'll add a line for the rule and we'll put in our float and I'll set it to right. Let's save that change and let's go out to our page and see what that does. I would expect to see the right block pushed off to hit the right edge of the page. And you can see that the green and the blue, which are the blocks below it, float right up. Now let's take a look at these empty blocks when we use a left float setting. I'll save that change, refresh our page, and we can see that the red block is pushed now to the left-hand side of the page, but at first glance, you might think that the green block has reduced in size. Actually, what's happened in this case is it's tucked underneath the red block. In our last example, we had a text block, and text has the ability to flow around the elements. But when we're talking about most of the other block elements, including divs, we have a rectangle, and those rectangles are gonna line up in this case at the top left corner. So by floating our red block to the left, we're actually tucking the next block right up underneath it as it floats up to that same level. Now you'll have to watch out for this overlapping behavior whenever you don't want it to occur, because obviously if we had text or images inside these blocks, they would be overlapping as well. Now we can also see another interesting thing happen if we have multiple floats. Now, right now the green and blue blocks have no float setting whatsoever, nor do they have any clear settings. So let's go in and try a couple of different things. First of all, what I'll do is change the settings on the green block. So let's go back to our document. I'll go into my green class style settings, and we're going to add a float setting to it right down at the bottom. Now the first thing I'll do is I'll float this one right. Let's save that change, and we'll go back and see how that affects our document. When I refresh the page, you can see now that the red block is floated left, the green block is floated right, and that leaves the blue block to be the one that floats upwards and fills up the space. And as you can see, it's floating right in there to fit just like the green one was nestled behind the red block. So again, we would see some overlapping occur. Now let's try out some other interesting thing. What if I floated my green block left as well? Let's go back and set that up. I'm just gonna go change the value on my green float setting to left. And now when I save that change, we have two left floated items. I'll refresh my page. And you can see that now the green block is sitting next to the red block. Now, basically, when you say float left on an item, it will push that item left as far as it can. The red element had nothing behind it except the gray block, and it had no float setting. So it was pushed all the way against the left-hand side of the page. The green block, when we pushed it left, the furthest we could push it is against the red block. And what's even more interesting is if we set another setting on the blue block, we can have it float on the other side as well. Let's just go in and do that real quick. I'll go into our blue style setting. We'll add a float property and set it to left as well. Let's save our change. I'll refresh the page. And now you can see we've got all of those elements stacked up against each other. Now, if there's not quite enough room on the page to show them all, you can see that we do have some wrapping occur. That blue element will float down to the next line if there's not enough room to stack it on the left-hand side. 
Now the same thing would happen if I took the three elements and pushed them all to the right. Let's just do that setting real quick. I'll change all of them to a right float. Just copy this here and paste it into the other two properties. We'll save that change. And let's go back and take a look at our browser. Now you can see that all the elements have been pushed to the right hand side of the page. And notice since the red one is the first one that was pushed there, it's the rightmost one. And they're stacked up in the order that they appear and were floated. Now let's try out some clear settings with this one. First of all, let me go back and set this up. I'd like my red block floated to the left, so we'll change that. I'll leave my green block floated to the right, and we saw what that looked like before, and we'll just remove the float setting on the blue block. I'll save my code changes, we'll refresh our page, and we can see that the red block is now pushed to the left, the green is pushed to the right, and the blue has been floated all the way up so it's partially hidden behind the red block. Now we can see exactly how much is hidden if we set a clear setting on our blue block. Let's go back to our code. I'll drop down to the bottom of the blue class and we'll add a style rule for clear. Now first, I only want to clear the red block, so I'm going to set this to clear left floated items. I'll save my changes. We'll go back and refresh our page. And you can see that now the blue block has been pushed down so that we can see all of the height, and it's sitting right down here underneath the red block. Notice that it also wraps up around the side of the green block. Remember, we have no other settings for it clearing right floats. Now let's go back and set it to clear right items. I'll select the left value in the code and replace that with right. Save our change. And we'll go back and refresh our page. And you can see now it's lined up right here with the bottom of the green block. Now normally we could just use whatever setting is appropriate. A lot of times you might even want to go ahead and set a clear both, just in case one column is bigger than the other. I'll go back and change the right value to both. And if we save our change and refresh the page, we shouldn't see any difference because it's still clearing both. In this case, the right one happens to be lower on the page and it's showing that it clears that. Now what if we came back here and we took the red block and we made it taller? I'm going to make it 250 pixels tall, which is taller than the green block. We'll save that change and we'll go out and refresh our page. And now you can see that the blue block, because of the both setting, is now clearing the red block because it's the lowest item on the page. Since we have a left and right setting on our green and red blocks, they're just sitting parallel to each other stacked up at the top, and they're basically just waiting for content to float up between them.